Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live at Five. It is Monday. Happy Monday, Paul. Oh, thanks, Beth. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Paul Wontorek. And we are here with Miss Caitlin Moynihan. Hi. And, and a there is a sly demon of death in the Ooh. house. <laughs> Will Dandridge. Will Dandridge is here for the one Tony winning Island. Broadway production of Once in This Island, Yay. which we love. We love her. We're so happy she's here. So excited. But first, our top five. It's only going to be a beautiful bikini bottom for a little bit longer. Oh, Look at her face. Not a good so thing, sad. Bottom. There's so many ways you could have gone with that. I know. Uh, so we found out last night that SpongeBob SquarePants, which we love, is closing on Broadway in two months. Uh, it will play its final performance at the Palace Theater on September 16th, a little yeah. more than two months. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, of course, the adaptation of the Nickelodeon animated series. We love this show. Uh, it got a lot of Tony nominations, 12 Tony nominations. It won for Best Set Design. Mm -hmm. you got to go see that set, by the way. By David Zinn. I mean, that's that's a must-see yeah. theatrical creation. The whole show is fantastic. We loved it. We put it on our favorite shows of 2017 list. We absolutely list. did. Um, and it started performances in November. I, I th Ethan Slater, obviously, and it. Lily Cooper, Danny Skinner, Gavin Lee, Wes Taylor. The whole, the whole cast is fantastic. They will do... Uh, not that cast necessarily, but there will be a North American tour uh, in fall of 2019. And this is sort of an interesting show. I think it's always p uh, had a hard time finding an audience because of bit. maybe the name and people didn't know if it was like a big guy to make sponge. So I don't know, so but, uh, but go see it. Go see it because it's a really uh, special theatrical creation. And I think you're going to love it. I loved mm -hmm. it. And I think audiences around North America are going to love it too. Mm -hmm. And the Grinch is looking to steal Broadway. Oh, very good, yeah, very good. You. Okay, so do you remember last Christmas there was this show called Who's well, There was a hullabaloo. Holiday. Wasn't there a legal hullabaloo? There was a hullabaloo, Hub if, you, if we must use that word. A little <laughs> dust up. So Who's Holiday is a parody of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Well, it's Cindy Lou who has like an old, old jaded drunk, right? In yeah. a trailer. In a trailer. Just... Just like th reflecting on her last that's forty the, that's years the since yeah. she that's the pitch. since she found the Grinch <laughs> on Christmas Eve. Um, but yeah, so there was a little bit of a dust up with the Dr. Seuss estate. Didn't like this, but parody law. But helped parody them out, law right? helped them out, so that yeah. the show moved forward. It's by Matthew Lombardo. Well, it looks like they are eyeing a Broadway bow for the Christmas season. Yeah, we don't have a lot of information about it. We just know that their producers are looking to do that. We don't have a cast or dates or anything, but. If you and want an anti-Christmas show, this is your Leslie show. And Leslie Margarita started it off-Broadway. She sure did. Last year. Yes, she did. Got an award nomination. She had a little tree with liquor bottles on it. <laughs> she did all that. It was special. <laughs> it was special. So, uh, yeah, so we might have another anti-Christmas we'll show. Cool. For the holiday season. Yeah. And straight white men is having a little problem keeping a man. <laughs> <laughs> so this is interesting. Yes. So um, thank you for that. Straight white man. Um, Young Jean Lee's new play. So let's see. Tom Skerritt. It's about a father and his sons, right? On Christmas, That's yes. That's what the setup is. Oh, it's a Christmas show. No, but uh, in July. And so Tom Skerritt was, who, by the way, was in Steel Magnolias, the movie. How that is good. true. How good. Not, um, that's anyway, not the only thing Tom he's Skerritt done. left the show. He was supposed to be in it. And then Denny Arndt, who was a Tony nominee for Heisenberg, yes. mm -hmm. took over. That's right. And then last week, Denny Arndt left. And Stephen Payne, the understudy, has mm -hmm. taken over the role permanently now. Congratulations, Stephen Payne. Um, and he left over creative differences. That's all we really know. We mm -hmm. don't know much else. Uh, but Denny Stephen Art Payne is not here to give us a statement. No. But um, That would be weird if he was. But <laughs> uh, it was, Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's unusual that, that, that a role sort of changes that, all, that many times. Before it's, it opens. It's in previews, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. So opening night is set for July 23rd. Of course, Army Hammer's in it. And yeah, like and that Josh guy. Charles. Josh Charles, Paul Schneider, Kate Bornstein, and Ty DeVoe. Uh, and so we'll see. I mean, it, it's going to play through September 9th, and it's written by Young Jean, Jean Lee, Lee. And directed and by Anna Shapiro. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. So, but, you know. But with a different I mean, cast than was originally announced. I think announced. Stephen Payne is there now, <laughs> he's, so. He's doing it. I wonder if the dressing room has been decorated three <laughs> times. <laughs> it hasn't come up as a question. No. And Westerberg High is taking a semester abroad. Oh, oh, all right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Heather's, Thank you. which was off Broadway a while ago and was a big hit here, <laughs> is, was at the other palace in London, and now it's moving to the West End. And it's been a big, big hit th there. This is going to be a limited 12-week 
12-week run at the Theater Royal Haymarket. They have such fancy names over there for their theaters. This is a show that has really benefited, I think, from time and like the album being out there and fans getting to know yes, it. Yes, it's right? true. I think that's sort of helped. There's like a real fan base for right. it. Right, by Lawrence O'Keefe. Um, and Kevin Murphy, and based on the 1988 movie starring Winona Ryder. And that's like that's our generation. That's our that's like our mean girls. Heather's is our mean girls. <laughs> it's if true. you need a reference for the movie, right? Do you need a reference for our ages? <laughs> it no. Is. There it's you ours, go. Yeah. This production is directed by Andy Fickman, and Carrie Hope Fletcher plays the lead role. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, love it. And hot stuff is coming your way. Hey, I'm always looking for hot stuff, Beth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's nice, Paul. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Ariana DeBose, we like her a she's lot. She's back, the Broadway bullet. She is the, the, the Bronx bullet. Bronx bullet, sorry. Bronx bullet. You, mm -hmm. can, you threw me off. I, Beth I, I usually knows her. the vlog titles. I do. Um, <laughs> I love She her, was Beth. the Bronx bullet uh, when she was in the Bronx Tale. That's right. In 2016. Which is a reference to now her Now, of Hamilton. course, <laughs> she is Disco Donna. Mm -hmm. Correct. Not Diva, not That's Duck Lang. Disco Correct. Donna um, in Summer, colon, the Donna Summer musical, which is like a smash hit over at the La Fontaine. Those, those, those women from New Jersey are are throwing back the booze and <laughs> dancing <laughs> in the <laughs> aisles, man. I think it's from the whole tri-state area. I mean, I, I know. And I, me, I'm a woman from New Jersey, clearly, because <laughs> I was one of them. Anyway, it's hot happening. stuff. So we asked her back. We said, hey, you did a vlog. We loved it. We love you. Will you do another one? And she's going to do it. And it yes, starts tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. And what's it called? Hot stuff. That's how we are. Yeah. We're pretty. We're pretty basic sometimes. Wow. So hot stuff starts tomorrow, and we can't wait to see it. Yep. Paul, thank you for joining uh, us today. Speaking of hot stuff. Oh, thank you for the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. segue. Papa, yay! <laughs> <laughs> I never really thought of Papa. Right, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Papa but Caitlin, hey, tell us about our guest, please. Of so course. Thank you, Paul. Guys, we have Merle Dandridge in the studio with us today. She is currently starring as Papa Gay and Once on This Island, the Tony-winning revival of Once on This Island. She has previously been on Broadway in Tarzan, Spam a lot, Jesus Christ Superstar, Ida, Rent. She's been, she's done a ton of stuff. You probably all know her. Um, her screen credits include Greenleaf and The Night Shift. Be sure to follow her on social media at Merle Dandridge and leave all your questions for her in the comments below. Everyone, please welcome Beth and Merle. Hey, Merle. What's going on, Beth? Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you. And I know you're going to have so many questions because yep. there are like Merle fans. No from kidding. From coast to coast. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so we'll get, to, we'll get to them, yeah. but I get to go first. <clears throat> okay. Welcome back. Thank you. To Once on this Island. Thank you so much. It's really How does it feel to be back? Really, really good. I missed it. We worked so hard to put this show up, and then to leave, you know, six weeks after we opened was heartbreaking. So uh, I was glad that uh, as soon as I wrapped season three of Greenleaf, I was able to come right back and, and uh, get reacquainted with those goats. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let me tell you something. They had a little bit of an attitude. They had a, they have <laughs> abandonment issues. Oh my because god! Because I'm really close with the goats, and you know, you would develop goats. A, you develop a trust with them and whatever. And I sure did walk in, and Peapod went straight to ramming my knees, and I was like, <laughs> I, it was like a teenager <laughs> acting out. Like you left me, you left. I was like, I get it, boo. I get it. <laughs> I'm here now, okay? You need some, so, like, goat couple therapy. A little bit, but we're cool now. You're, we're you're cool. Okay. We're back in it. and uh, But it, it did take some <laughs> a moment. It, but it was, it's nice. It's really great. <laughs> How was your green leaf leave? This it, show is huge. <laughs> it's, so it's the season three starts in August, is that correct? Yeah, August 28th and 29th, we have a two-night premiere on OWN. Oh, if you haven't seen season one and two, they're on Netflix. So feel free to catch that. Yeah, it's... Um, picked up quite a bit of momentum in mm -hmm. the, uh, over the course of these uh, few years that we've been doing it. And it's, I mean, man. It's, it's high drama. It's a huge blessing. I'm really, I feel very, very lucky. But uh, season three, we're coming out of the gates with some brand new stuff. Ooh. And uh, I think y'all will be very excited, very pleased. I love looking at people who talk to you uh, about Greenleaf and they're like, we didn't know you came from the stage world where I'm like, wait, you're doing TV? <laughs> You're ours. You're <laughs> us. We know you. That's my favorite thing. Thank you for coming from TV to do Broadway. <laughs> and I'm like, Playa, I was here. I was on these <laughs> boards for a decade. <laughs> busting my rump. This is my family. These yeah, are my you're roots. Home now. Yes. Uh, these, you know, 15 blocks or this radius is, is where I cut my teeth. It's where I feel at home. It's where I feel strong. And, um, and it's... Uh, it is so good to be back. Mm -hmm. So, hey. 
I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so how is Papa Gay informing your life outside of the theater? <laughs> Because first of all, we, first of all, we have to talk about your costume. Yeah, <laughs> go on. Okay. <laughs> uh, the costume doesn't leave much to the imagination. I don't wear a whole lot, which is really funny because I, when we were in the the uh, lab to the rehearsal to preview, I had so much time to get in fighting shape for that. And fortunately, one of the best trainers in town, Roderick Covington, is in the cast with oh. CRF training. So um, he had me right and tight for, for by the time opening came but then I spent a little bit of time in TV and, I, and then I took a little bit I had you know I had a, and I came back and I was like oh. <laughs> oh okay so he's got me on this hangry diet right now but no and well, that might really, that might help fuel yeah exactly my character real life. real mean <laughs> um but it's uh yeah he's trying to get it get it back together for me <laughs> But this character is dark. Yeah, it is. And ferocious. Mm -hmm. Tell me about tapping into that. Well, that's a that's a great question because being able to leave that at the door requires uh, making it um, 100% not of myself. Yeah. So I created an entire character, um, almost fable-like because we have all these characters that we come to the island with in the pre-show. If you've never seen the pre-show, show, if you've never seen the show, come early because we you get to interact with us as the islanders, very uh, like a post um, Haiti hurricane island where we're picking up the pieces. You have relief workers and uh, everyone just trying to pitch in to get the island back in shape. So out of that, we had a lot of improv and we created completely new characters that build into the the uh, once on this island characters. The ones on the, in the script. Yes, exactly. Mine is Rosalind Laventure, mm. and oh. she is, um, which is translates to the Rose of Fate, mm -hmm. and she was um, out of her heartbreak and some um, murderous things that happened in her life. It, I'm, I'm taking you all the way there. Yeah, um, take me it, there. It it shed helped her to shed her feminine side and really step into her masculinity because um, the pain of, of um, expressing or, or believing in, in the power of love is something that she couldn't face because her tragedy was so deep. And it also included um, uh, her, you know, she, she came from a farm and all that kind of stuff. So having the goat is tied into that and then eventually taking on the horns. And, uh, you know, uh, every, every little bit is specific and tied into the character that I built. And, um, and so when she fights with, uh, Erzuli the entire time over the concept of love, whether or not it's... It, What's it, more powerful. Yeah, exactly. Um, what will win here? She ha she almost has to fight it to prove that everything that she has gone through is true. Oh, so that okay. when when Erzuli wins... Oh, yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, spoiler alert. Love <laughs> conquers all. Love yeah. conquers all. So when Timun makes a decision that she makes, I'm not going to tell you what that is, it proves uh, Papa Gay's entire hypothesis is incorrect. Mm -hmm. And so she must let her heart break all over again. And then when, when we come together and we share the story again at the end of the show, it's a different experience than oh, when yeah. you, so it's easy to let that go because in the story, I have to let it go. Right. Wow. And, and also, again, believe in the power of love and that it can even heal the most broken heart. Hmm. That's so beautiful. I love that. Love that, that was a lot. That, that was, was a lot. I'm sorry, I took but you all the way there. it was worth every that. minute. <laughs> worth it. Worth it. And this has been a full circle for you because you saw Once on this Island as a young person. That's that exactly right? right. Hey, now. <laughs> so, um, I didn't have a whole lot of direction <laughs> as a kid. I had a lot of discipline, but not a lot of direction. And um, I took drama as an easy elective in high school, and all the cool kids were going to the International Thespian Festival. And it was there that I got my full ride to college. Wow. And Just one of the first- Take the easy A, guys, because there's a lesson in there. Um, well, <laughs> d be disciplined in whatever you put your hand oh, to, yeah. Yeah. to the plow with. Um, so when I got there, there were two shows that represented me because I grew up in Nebraska where there wasn't a lot of representation of the way that I looked and there were two shows that year um the two main stage shows were Once on this Island and Big River mm. wow wow I, I mean huge ones where uh, all of a sudden I was like wait 
wait, there is so much more. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've just, just now remembered that when I, when I heard um, the crossing and Big River for the first time, oh, yeah. and then um, I saw Once on this Island, and um, to be able, and, and also uh, another Aaron's and Flaherty uh, theme in my life is that um, when I came to New York, it was out, out of college, uh, the first open casting in Chicago that for Rent. Uh -huh. And I came here. Rent was the first Broadway show that I ever saw. The second was Ragtime. Wow. And I was wow. so broke that a friend had to take me to it. And I sat right in the orchestra. And the next show that was in there was my Broadway debut. Wow. <clears throat> That's so uh, Lynn Ahrens and Stephen Flaherty, their music and their heart have been uh, uh, connecting connective thread through a lot of my career. So to be able to work with them, love them as people, not just as artists, and collaborate like this, the fact that they trusted me to take this character into a completely different direction meant right. the C world. The first female Papa Gay. Yes, yeah. it meant the world to me. So um, their faith, uh, uh, of course, along with uh, Michael Arden's vision to even put me in this yeah. role, mm -hmm. to even do that with this role um, has, culminated in one of the most creatively wonderful, beautiful experiences of my life with some of the most wonderful people I've ever met. And then you had to pause that and work with Oprah. I mean, I it mean, was so <laughs> hard. My life is really complicated. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a blessing upon blessing. Yeah. And that's also, f well, okay, I know. There are like a thousand questions. I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that's also full circle for you because this is, Greenleaf is about a mega church. Yeah. And you have some connections to the Memphis I do. church. Uh, Greenleaf takes place in um, a Memphis mega church and the Dandridges, my whole family, um, I'm one of maybe almost 50 first cousins in Memphis. Wow. We're, we're a big family. We're all in the church. My uncle is a bishop. We're, everybody is in the church in Memphis. Are they all Memphis. watching this show? Uh, Greenleaf? Yeah. yeah. Are they sending <laughs> notes? Yeah, they're, they're watching. And, and I, I run a checklist by them. You know, like, is this ringing true? Yes. yes. Oh, <laughs> I, they... They love it, and they live for it, and they're extremely proud. They're not listed as producers, but they're sort of serving for oh, it. A little bit. A little bit. They're um, uh, consultants. No, I'm Unofficial. Unofficial. <clears throat> but yeah, so you know, my having grown up as a military brat and lived outside of Memphis, every summer I would go home to Memphis, to our family's home. Mm -hmm. And so there was a great, there was always that sense of a little outside, a little other, but still coming into what my... Um, you know, my calling is and what, what my home is. That's amazing. In the same way as Gigi it. does in, in Greenleaf. Wow. <clears throat> All right. I'm just smiling at you over there, Caitlin, because there are so many questions. So I, I many can just questions. feel them coming in. Do you feel them? I oh. feel, feel them. Oh, um, that makes yeah. me feel good. So Thanks for, for tuning in. This question I really like. Uh, Jake asks, has your approach to Papa Gay changed at all since you've been back first before you left the show? Has my approach to Papa Gay changed? Uh, what I have gained is perspective because I, I think I was a little bit still caught up in the, um, I went through so many incarnations. Like there was an animalistic version. There was a um, really angry version. There were so many different keys. So I'd, I, had, I was just letting it settle. So having the time away and also listening to that, that cast recording, I'm proud of it. Yeah, I mean, I really yeah. like it. Um, with with Anne-Marie Malazzo's 16-part um, vocal arrangements and uh, e everyone that contributed on that. But being able to um, look at it outside of the box and then come back and actually see the show. I'd never seen the show. I didn't know what it looked like. Um, gave me so much more confidence so I could just step into it and let it be more. I think I was trying a little bit in the mm -hmm. beginning and now I can just sit in it and um and just just relax and 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 we we swagger that's four <laughs> guys we have we're we're doing something a little bit uh, I'm really digging it yeah. I mean even <laughs> even more than than um when I was first here it, there's a there's a new level that I just is pretty delicious love it <laughs> And that kind of goes into this question. Um, Caitlin asks, what is your favorite moment to watch or experience every night? <laughs> you know, it's funny. Um, during, uh, right after 
the Sad Tale of Bozom, I sit amongst the audience. And last night, a very rare experience happened for me where there wasn't anybody on either side of me that last night. And I was watching Tim Moon, which always breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. um, Kanita Miller is, uh, and uh, Philip Boykin are unbelievable. We had some wonderful uh, understudies on last night in um, uh, David Jennings and Cicely Tyson. C C Cicely. Mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't. Know you know what I mean. She's in the she's in the show now. <laughs> yes, my uh, my rent um, co-star. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I was so caught up in the story, I started applauding. <laughs> 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 Fortunately, nobody saw me, but I was like, "Oh, I'm mean again." <laughs> I love there you that. Go. Yeah, I like yeah, that. but I like it, it. it catches me every time. There are so many moments really that catch me every time, um, and it and it always surprises me. I was telling Alex the other night that um, this week, for some reason, when um, in the finale, and and Asuka accepted her, when he opens his arms to her, it just it catches me and, I, and tears spring to my eyes every night. I'm like, I'm effing Papa Gay right now. Stop <laughs> crying in the finale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, so it's something new all the time. I love that. Where were you Tony night? I was here. I came back. You were there. I had just come back and I got to party with everybody That's great. and um, and celebrate it because we worked so hard for it. And uh, I had just gotten mm -hmm. into town and um, uh, was able to, it was, it was funny, um, Jackie Burns who plays Elphaba right mm -hmm. now, who ironically enough, sh so she'd gotten out and we went and um, met up with my cast together. When I was auditioning for it, we were workshopping a show in Toronto, and Michael had asked me to put something on tape, and I was like, I don't know where I'm gonna do it. Hey, Jackie, can you come down to the gym and, and put something on your iPhone for me? <laughs> the gym. Of me doing Papa Gay, and I still have that video, <laughs> and we're just in the hotel gym like, there is an island. <laughs> <laughs> so she's kind of, it was full circle for her to do that for me last year and then um, and then be there to celebrate Tony Night. Such a great moment when it won. Yeah. Wasn't it? Oh, it was. We, it was a breathless, Wasn't breathless. It? And we were all screaming. And we were, yeah. we started running laps around the office. Like we saw it one, we just started screaming and, because it's such yes. a beautiful, yeah. unique piece of theater. It's one of those things. One of those projects is like this is why it got into theater. Yeah. Stuff like this, and the fact that our our beautiful, beautiful little jewel of the Antilles mm -hmm. was appreciated for what it was yeah. was. Oh, and they were all wonderful revivals and classic shows. Yeah. yeah. So it was just no one really knew who was going to win that category. Right. Right. That it made it really surprising it. and wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. All right, one more yeah, question. Uh, we gotta okay, go. Okay, one more question. Let me pick a good one. Um, okay, I like this one. Uh, Peyton asks, what do you enjoy about Papa Gay's personality? Oh, what do I like about Papa Gay's personality? Man. <laughs> that's <laughs> tough. If anything. <laughs> I, I do like that for the children, everything is an exception. Mm -hmm. And that is um, why the little girl can be in her presence, and it's also the uh, the real voodoo god of death um, is is a lover of children and candy. <laughs> <laughs> so if I ever ask you for sweets, if you come in the, yeah. the audience, that's what that's about. But no, that 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 her relationship with the child through whom the story's uh, you know, eyes are being told through sh we're seeing it through her eyes mm -hmm. that um that that relationship can still be sweet and malleable that mm -hmm. she doesn't have to be scared of papa gay mm -hmm. as part of the storytelling which i think is very sweet so all the other kids can feel like oh papa gay's not mean to that little kid she's mm -hmm. not going to come for me <laughs> uh, yet like it. yet love it <laughs> all right well merle yeah. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very you much. You guys have got to go see Once on this Island. I can't believe you haven't gone yet. You have yeah. to go go back. Go back. Mm -hmm. Merle Dandridge is back in the show. Till August 19th. Till August 19th. And get ready for Greenleaf, season three. Hey, August 20th and 29th on the OWN Network. Wow. Thank you. All right, Caitlin, take us out of here. <laughs> of course. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at Five on Facebook every single day. The podcast version of today's episode will be up right after this because I know you're just going to re-listen to this over and over again because it was wonderful. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Susan Blackwell. Yes, side by side by Susan Blackwell, Susan Blackwell, about her new show, Gone Missing. <laughs>